Thank you for joining us on Newsbeat. Here's a look at our top stories. The state's attorney is fighting for a new bill of rights for crime victims. Find out what voters have to do to make it law. Plus, major changes on the CTA. What you need to know if you decide to carry a bag with you. And some exciting moments for NASA. They'll be traveling further into space than ever before. New speech starts right now. Good morning. Today is October 28th, 2014. I'm Ashley Richardson. And I'm Charles Jefferson. Welcome to Newsbeat. We have a lot of important updates this Tuesday morning. Whether or not you've been a victim of a violent crime, chances are you know someone who has. Since 2008, State's Attorney General Lisa Madigan and her team have been trying to do something about it. Now you can vote on it. Newsbeat's Patty Baskin covered a news conference about the bill, and she's live in the newsroom with more on that and what voters think about it. Patty. in the making. A lot of people are backing it, hoping lawmakers give the bill a yes. This would advocate for more information and greater involvement for victims in criminal cases. I ask that those rights be enforced in the state of Illinois. Murdered are coming out in support of the amendment through a new YouTube video which was just released yesterday. Lisa Madigan and her team have been working on this since 2008, and this will be on the upcoming ballot. It will be a question where voters will get a pamphlet, and they will be informed about this Bill of Rights for crimes victims. They will be able to vote yes or no, and Lisa Madigan is hoping that they will vote yes so that these crime victims have some sort of pr protection. As of right now, Illinois does have a Bill of Rights, but the laws are not enforceable. This amendment will be able to correct the wording of that law. I'm Patty Boskin, live from the newsroom. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Patty. A beautiful Saturday evening quickly turned ugly for a 13-year-old boy on the south side. Police say the boy suffered a gunshot wound in the leg while he was outside in the Inglewood neighborhood. According to reports, someone dressed in dark colored clothing opened fire at about 5.30 in the afternoon. Authorities don't think the minor was the intended target. He's in good condition at the University of Chicago Children's Hospital. Some terrifying moments for one family after their baby girl was kidnapped from their home. The search for her stretched from Tennessee to right here in Illinois. Here's a picture of eight-month-old baby Samaya with a state trooper. She was found Friday in downstate Illinois after an Amber Alert was issued in Tennessee. She was kidnapped from her Memphis home but was found safe inside a car after authorities stopped the vehicle. Three people have been arrested, one possibly being her biological father. The baby girl was released from the hospital. Right now, she's in the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. Soon, CTA riders will have their bags searched at random, all to crack down on terrorism. Starting November 3rd, police officers will start screening rail passengers' bags for explosives. Now, uh, officers will be stationed outside the turnstiles uh, at major air stations like these, asking random passengers if they're willing to submit to screening. Special detail of about six officers will swab their bags. Then the swab will be run through a machine called the mobile threat detector. The results can be seen in seconds. Now, if you refuse, you could be denied entry to the station, and you could be arrested at the officer's discretion. We'll have right a reaction on next week's show. Same-sex marriage is now legal in six more states. Legal battles and protests have helped to push through the change. The six new states are Alaska, Wyoming, Arizona, West Virginia, Idaho, and North Carolina. This brings the total number of states up to 32, including Washington, D.C. You know, it's one thing to prohibit a high-paying executive from working for a competitor, but Jimmy Johns is a actually wants its workers to sign a non-complete clause. Uh, I think this is kind of funny. The non-complete clause says that they will not work 
uh, for competing sandwich chain for two years. House Democrats plan to send a letter to the Labor Department tomorrow to ask the agency to look into the non-complete clause that Jimmy Johns is using. Now, non-complete clauses are generally reserved for certain types of workers like engineers with access to trade secrets or news people like us who could drive up another station's ratings. But these agreements have become more commonplace as businesses try to do whatever they can to fight the competition. And Jimmy Johns has not made a public statement as of yet. The countdown has begun for NASA's test flight with brand new spacecraft, Orion. Staff from NASA came to Columbia College to give our school a sneak peek. And our newsroom Newsbeats reporter Elizabeth Dulu was there for the presentation. She's live in the newsroom with more on the story. Hi, Elizabeth. The Orion flight launch is years in the making, and NASA is taking us along for the entire journey. has been sent into space many times. But NASA will soon be going to new heights with their new spacecraft, Orion. This time they are going further than ever before. In fact, it is planned to go 15 times further into space than the International Space Station. NASA staff came to Columbia College to share the exciting news. So this is our first step in testing out our thermal protection system, some of our communications and computer integration systems, uh, and. Um, as well as, you know, the orbital mechanics of the spacecraft. So we'll be testing all that out. This exploration did not happen overnight. It is years in the making and will continue over the course of many more years. We're building a 30, 40 year program. So we've had a tremendous amount of investment in facility upgrades, uh, testing, hardware development, tooling development. Not only will Orion take astronauts to where they have never gone before, it will also allow them to explore our solar system for longer periods of time. We've never been out of space. We've had space station, space station up there for 15 years, living and working in space. So we never left space. We've been there. And thanks to Orion, they will stay in space for a lot longer. And the test launch will be available on their website for live streaming. So you can check that out on December 4th. I'm Elizabeth Delu in the newsroom. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Liz. A family love triangle turns into a horrific, violent act. New developments in the school shooting in Washington, what officials say prompted a popular kid to turn into a monster. The chilling details next. Why medical professional, professionals who are helping fight Ebola are upset. Mandatory quarantine has caused another kind of battle. Two people are dead and four wounded in a school cafeteria on Friday. 14-year-old Jalen Freiberg opened fire and then he fatally shot himself at Maryville's Pilchuck High School in Washington State. Uh, see just someone knowing what expected it to happen. Yesterday at football practice he was all fine, we were talking, having a good time. And, and then today just just horrible. I don't know what went through his head or caused him to do it. Many have said Freiburg was a well-liked student who was named Homecoming Prince last week. Yet his recent social media posts are telling a different story. As the last tweet was, it won't last, it'll never last. Some evidence indicates this case is not just a random shooting. It's more of a love triangle. The other victim who was fatally shot is 14-year-old Zoe Glasso. Glassell was friends with Freiburg and was dating his cousin Andrew, who also got shot. He's in critical condition. Now, according to their friends, Andrew and Zoe attended homecoming together last week. The students who witnessed the shooting say all the victims are Freiburg's family and friends. They are still fighting for their lives. A different kind of controversy over how the Ebola crisis is being handled here in the U.S. A nurse claims she is being mistreated by the state of New Jersey after recently helping Ebola patients in West Africa me is just completely unacceptable. When I arrived in the isolation unit, they took my temperature orally and it was completely normal. New Jersey released Nurse Hickox yesterday morning after a heated debate between supporters of quarantine and those who say it's a violation of basic rights. 
This release was made after Nurse Hickox hired a lawyer to sue over her mandatory 21-day quarantine. Nurse Hickox has tested negative for Ebola. Right now in Chicago, the Ebola crisis is center stage. Over 6,000 emergency room doctors are attending a medical conference at McCormick Place. The four-day conference features experts from around the country. A doctor from Emory University, that's the hospital that saved the lives of two Ebola patients, will give a lecture. Hot topics include how to properly quarantine patients who have Ebola-like symptoms. The conference ends Thursday. Many are mourning the loss of a music legend who introduced the fu fusion of jazz and rock. And a registered sex offender is dating a star from the, re the reality show, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. You won't believe who was convicted of molesting. More headroom on the over the shoulder box. The world mourns the loss of British musician Jack Bruce, the 71-year-old lead vocalist of Cream died Saturday from liver disease. He was best known as the bassist of the band. Some of his hits include Spoonful and his platinum double album, Wheels of Fire. Renowned fashion designer Oscar De La Renta will be buried next week. The private funeral will be held in New York on November 4th for close friends and family members. The designer died last Monday in his Connecticut home, surrounded by family. Sarah Jessica Parker and Jennifer Lawrence are just a couple of the Hollywood celebrities seen wearing his creations on the red carpet. TLC gave the boot to hit reality show Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. The series is being canceled after TMZ reported that June Shannon, better known as Mama June, is dating an old boyfriend who is a registered sex offender. Mark McDaniel was convicted of molesting, molesting Shannon's daughter Anna, better known as Chickadee, on the show when she was eight years old. But Shannon says otherwise. Uh, she took to her Facebook page uh, to denounce the allegations. TLC announced in a statement on Friday that the uh, counseling the series and supporting the health and welfare of children. Now this next story is crazy. Imagine receiving two lottery tickets as a gift and you hit the big one. The Chicago teen received the best present ever for her 19th birthday, a $4 million check. Desi Ocampo says her father gave her two Illinois lottery scratch-off tickets worth about $20 each. One turned out to be the big winner. Ocampo says the plans, she plans to use the money to buy her family a house and complete her nursing degree. She was presented with a check last week at the gas station on the city's northwest side. You know, my grandmother said that, you know, when you get itchy fingers, you know, you're about to come into some money. So I've been having some itchy fingers lately. So I think I'm going to come into some money. You want to itch my fingers oh, for luck? Oh, of course. <laughs> I can always pass it around. But, you know, I think I'm, I'm feeling it. I, yeah. I know. Me too. We had a beautiful start to this week. And summer made a comeback. But how long will it last? We've got Kiana Johnson here with your weather forecast. And, Kiana, do you think we'll need a coat for Halloween? We most definitely will need a coat for this week. Yesterday, we saw summer-like temperatures, a high of 79. Today will be in the 60s, but all good things must come to an end. Let's take a look outside. So we have a view of the Buckingham Fountain, a very beautiful view. It's very sunny outside, a nice day to actually go and take a walk during your lunch break. Um, as you can see, it's very beautiful outside. Um, today we have a high of 60 degrees, a low of 42, gusty winds of about 20 to 30 miles per an hour. 
And here are the temperatures in other cities, 59 in Waukegan, 59 in Aurora, and at Midway, 63 degrees and 59 at O'Hare. And now can we take a look? So tonight temperatures will drop to 52 degrees, very little precipitation or rain, um, miles going in at 12 miles per an hour. And here's a look at our five-day forecast. On Wednesday, we have a high of 55 degrees and a low of 40s. As we go into Thursday, the high is 54 degrees, a little bit of rain, so you may have to pull out your rain boots. As we go into Friday, temperatures take a plunge to 48 degrees and a low of 33. Um, and you may actually need to be sure that your kids wear warm clothes. Um, Sunday, the temperatures actually do go back up to 55 degrees. So, what are you guys going to be for Halloween? You know, I'm going to be a rapper, and you know what, actually, I came up with a little rap here, so I just want you guys to just hear this real quick, and tell me what you guys think about this, alright? You ready to hear this? I was wearing shorts about a week ago, a week ago. I gotta grab my hoodie because I'm freezing, yo, freezing, yo. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. We can't say the name of the song, you know, obviously for real reasons. But I guess if this journalism thing doesn't work out, I can go cut a record deal somewhere. You know, yeah. we could. I think you've got great potential to be a rapper. Oh, thank you. That, you guys are so nice. All right, thanks, Guiana. Thank you, guys. The Blackhawks score to win at the United Center. Sports reporter Jessica Lang will be here to tell us the details on Sunday's game. And then... winding down while hockey and base basketball are just heating up. Yeah, that's right. Newsbeat's Jessica Lang is here to fill us in on what happened in the sports room. How about those bears, Jessica? Oh, guys, you know, it's, it's a hot mess, to say the least. <laughs> Let's get right to it. It was yet another embarrassing loss for the Bears, this time to the Patriots. Some critics are calling for the jobs of Coach Mark Trestman and defensive coordinator Mel Tucker. Take a look. Under two minutes to go in the first half, Bears trail 21-7. Brady throws to Gronkowski, touchdown pass. Then LaFell scores a touchdown on a nine-yard pass from Brady. That's two. And a 15-yard Jay Cutler fumble recovery for Nikovich makes three touchdowns for the Pats in just 57 seconds. Tom Brady and company take an easy win, final score 51-23. And to add insult to injury, no pun intended, Lamar Houston tore his ACL while celebrating his first sack of the year on Tom Brady. His season is effectively over. Let's get right to the ice. The Blackhawks hosted the Ottawa Senators at the United Center Sunday. Jonathan Taze and Brent Seabrook each scored a goal in the second period, leading the Hawks to a 2-1 victory. Lamont native Scott Darling made his NHL debut subbing for Corey Crawford, who was out with an upper body injury. The goalie had a spectacular performance with 32 saves. About 30 of his friends and family were in the stands to cheer him on. Also on Sunday, the Royals took on the Giants in San Francisco in Game 5 of the World Series. Robin Williamson threw out the first pitch in honor of his late dad, who was a big Giants fan. San Francisco scored five runs while pitcher Madison Bumgarner shut out Kansas City. The Giants lead the series 3-2. Now, real quick, Kansas City hosts San Francisco in a crucial Game 6 of the World Series tonight. 
Next, the Bulls tip off the regular season tomorrow against the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. And finally, the glory continues for those little league champs, Jackie Robinson West. President Obama invited the team to the White House while he was in town last week. And that's a look at your sports. Thanks, Jessica. You know, that bear season's just turning out to be terrible. But I am really excited for the Bulls' home opener against the Cavs and LeBron James. Yeah, we got to see, you know, let's see what Derrick Rose can do. He's been out for quite a while, so it'll be interesting. I yeah. think he's going to make a good comeback. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jessica. And that's our show for today. We enjoyed your company. I'm Charles Jefferson. And I'm Ashley Richardson. Thanks for joining us today.